So cortisol is a steroid hormone made by your adrenal glands, which sit on top of your kidneys. And when I say steroid hormone, that means that you need cholesterol to make cortisol, which is fat, right? So you need fat to make proper amounts of cortisol. And lately cortisol gets a lot of hate, um, especially as the term adrenal fatigue is thrown around a lot. Um, which does hold value, adrenal fatigue, like the concept, but we do need to specify adrenal fatigue when we talk about it. When cortisol levels are optimal, you experience a normal circadian rhythm. So it wakes you up in the morning and gets you energized to start your day. And then by evening time, cortisol is lulling. It's getting lower, right? So you can then go back into sleep mode and your melatonin secretion can take over. So you need it high in the morning and low at night, but if you have a cortisol imbalance, which a lot of athletes tend to get, and you have too high cortisol, that's gonna throw you off. So since too much cortisol is often the problem with athletes, we'll address it here. So basically too much cortisol is potentiated by too much intense exercise, followed by not enough rest and recovery. Not enough food, nourishment, sleep, what have you, time between workouts can all throw your cortisol out of balance. This is because anytime you start doing intense exercise, your adrenal glands kind of rev up and they start secreting more cortisol as your heart rate increases. That is normal. What is not normal is doing this so often that it throws your body into a state of fight or flight mode all the time. Our DNA has not changed that much in the last thousand years compared to like our ancestors. And like thousands of years ago, if you were running a lot, it usually meant you were being chased by something. And so automatically your sympathetic nervous system kicks on to help you escape a predator. And this is kind of what your body thinks it's doing now. If you're always running or swimming or biking and doing this cardio where your heart rate spikes, so it gives you that cortisol and turns that system on to help you survive. And it's like, yay. But if you're constantly doing this and not letting your parasympathetic system switch on, which is your rest and digest system, it's gonna lead to an imbalance. Cortisol needs to follow the Goldilocks rule. You need to have just enough, not too much, not too little. An imbalance could look like, I feel super stressed out and anxious all the time. I gain weight around my abdomen or midsection area because this is where cortisol likes to tell your body to store fat. I wake up between two and 4 a.m. a lot, almost every night or multiple times a night and I have a really hard time going back to sleep and then my mind starts racing. I get shaky if I don't eat enough like or constantly. I feel like I always have low blood sugar and I always feel hangry and I think about food a lot, especially sweets and sugary food. I get really moody, cranky, on edge. I have mood swings. Sometimes I feel like I have high blood pressure or my heart rate is elevated or if I stand up, I get dizzy. I feel super tired during the day and at 2 p.m. I literally crash and I need to nap. But then when I go to bed by 10.30, I get a second wind and I feel really tired but wired, energized, and my mind is just all over the place. Now there's a lot of ways to address this problem and a lot of holistic solutions to high cortisol. Um, but the most important thing is decreasing your training load and increasing your amount of nourishment and rest. Um, but we'll go over some more of that in the future video.